Hello folks and how are you all doing? Now in this video we will be discussing about some database stuff. Some serious stuff we are discussing after lots of chill videos. So database management enters a new era of complexity. And this article is from around 3 months ago from 31st January 2024. Increased complexity, the rapid adoption of emerging technologies and a growing skills gap are the biggest concerns of IT leaders in 2024 according to Redgate. And I believe this growing skills gap is the biggest concern of developers like us. 30% of development teams now deploy database changes to production in a day or less, up by 50% from last two years ago. Further complicating the scenario, surveys showed that 79% of IT teams are now using more than one database, with 29% of respondents using more than five. Catering for different use cases, adding flexibility and achieving cost savings are the driving factors behind the escalating pace and change towards multi-platform database landscape say David Gummer, Redgate CPO. So what it looks like is uh, when teams are using one database for storing their data, whatever data they have, somehow it costs more than using five databases. Maybe because some of the databases have some free tire initially and maybe their data is not too high. So, and they may have been uh, using different kinds of data. So maybe they are using five kinds of databases to save costs or something like that. Looks like, I don't know the details, but let's read ahead. However, the sheer volume of platform choices with the respondents citing usage of 16 different database types highlights why it's critical that IT teams are upskilled and have the right tools in place. But isn't it too much? 16 types of databases? Is upskilling really the solution in this case? I wonder. It's clear that the organizations are currently scrambling to keep up with the increased complexity, the pressure of compliance and emerging technologies like AI and the cloud, and are seeking solutions to narrow the skills gap, added Gummer. Increased skills demand for individuals and teams. Despite the many benefits of employing multiple databases, an increased skills requirement for individuals and teams is cited as a number one challenge people face. With 38% of respondents naming this as a problem, skill diversification is also cited as a top need by 31% when dealing with data management processes across multiple database types. So yeah, so what it looks like is uh, we are using lots of databases to save our costs because mathematically speaking, it, uh, I mean, it makes sense that use five kind of databases and use their free tires uh, to save costs. But what happens is uh, the developers that you need should also be skilled in the five kind of databases. And in that case, they may charge more and the company is paying by another way. So maybe there is a slight uh, off calculation happening that uh, in the end they are spending more or less. Anyway. While database de DevOps is well established, with 73% of respondents stating they have already adopted it across all uh, or some of their projects or are planning to do so in the next two years, mm -hmm. issues remain 42% of respondents st state that there is a lack of critical skills in their teams, while 29% also cite a limited understanding of DevOps as a major obstacle. So yeah, so right now we have too many skills and so I believe all of the teams are facing some or other kinds of skill issues. If there are so many things and limited hours, so how can somebody learn everything? Yeah, that's a fair question, I would say. It's good to see that the database now included as a natural partner in DevOps with the alignment of people, technology, and processes leading to a faster, more efficient, and stable application development. Gummer continued, however, to keep pace with the business demands, we have to overhaul our thinking and invest in cross-team education as well as tools across the entire database development lifecycle, particularly if we hope to ready for yet more new technologies which are already at our doors. Yeah, and uh, this basically means that uh, we should be aware of what tools we are using. Otherwise, we won't be able to handle all the new tools that are coming up. So yeah, so even I believe that too much innovation is actually some kind of a burden on human beings, even innovative human beings like me, for example. Anyway, AI gains traction in the database development. The use of AI in database development is also on the rise with 20% of respondents to the survey currently using AI for DB management and a further 35% considering doing so for respondents putting AI to work in database management. 57% confirmed that using AI to analyze and optimize database queries or code, 48% used it for testing scenarios while 55% uh, confirmed using AI to generate sample code or data. While there are some advantages to be gained, respondents also cited concerns about AI, uh, including worries about data security accuracy of the results and tools that the tools produce as well as concerns of a lack of training and expertise. I mean, yeah, if you use too much AI data, I mean, it's natural that there will be hibrish gibberish. The move to cloud is firmly established. 
while 88% of organizations are um, using cloud in some way. Although the survey revealed that 36% of respondents favored a hybrid approach, it's clear cloud adoption is poised to gain further momentum with those hosting databases mostly for in the all cloud growing from 18 to 36% over the last three years. While cost is typically seen as the biggest driver of the cloud, respondents noted that the stability and flexibility it offers, uh, followed by close, uh, closely by high availability and reliability, are also the two biggest reasons for migrating workloads and data. So this is uh, one thing that when you take the cloud certification examination, uh, they will be asking this kind of questions that why is cloud good? And so you should answer that it is because of high availability and reliability. And that is also a big reason that the teams are saying that they are moving to cloud from their on-prem database. So yeah, so if you are giving AWS or Azure exams, make sure to remember this point. 2024 will bring a renewed need for DBS database administrators and developers to acquire new skills so they can best understand and control cost, manage security more effectively, and monitor databases for performance issues when estates are spread across one or more cloud providers as well as on-prem grammar continued. In effect, database professionals need to double their skill set to manage the range of database types that are now used by nearly 80% of all respondents in the survey. As an industry, we must work together and rise to the challenge of narrowing the skill gaps, whether that means upscaling internally or finding external solutions to address the needs across the database DevOps landscape, he concluded. So yeah, so too many databases uh, and uh, that is the problem. I'm not sure uh, that is really the problem or each individual solution, like each database claims to solve one or the other problem, but having too many of them is another problem and uh, the solution is uh, bridging the skill gap. So developers have to upskill themselves. That is the only solution. So that's it for this folks. So um, I would like to know your opinion on this. What do you think of this uh, database stuff? Uh, do we really need so many databases and uh, upskilling as a result of it? I mean, is it really killing the purpose or is it simply innovation that is happening on its own and we should never mess with that? I mean, we should allow the market to behave as it is behaving. So yeah, I would like to know your thoughts on this. And uh, if you want to discuss uh, with me more about things related to tech and programming, you can join my Discord server. I will keep the link in the description below. And also, if you like the video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. It helps the channel grow. And uh, that's it for this video. And I will see you next time.